I'm sure if you're interested in audio and have done a little bit of research, you've heard the acronym HiFi. This designation is used a bit too liberally, I think, and more of us should inform people what to consider high fidelity audio and what's just marketing fluff and disinformation. Companies love to call their gear HiFi. They especially are fond of the high res sticker they enjoy so much. Today we'll dive into the world of high fidelity, what it is and what it can be for you. Before we get into this conversation, which I am so excited to talk about with all of you, I encourage you after the show to visit my description below and explore my audio inspired online clothing shop, my new music on Bandcamp, and familiarize yourselves with my other content across all the social media platforms. I'm Mike and I'm your hi-fi journalist. The other day I was browsing through the internet, which I caution you sometimes it's not the greatest idea. And I kept stumbling upon hi-fi this and hi-fi that. It dawned on me that I don't think many people grasp what hi-fi or high fidelity really is. That's what I wanna to clarify today. I wanna to give you a solid definition, discuss some examples, and even suggest how to put together a system for as little coin as possible that could very well be considered hi-fi. Now, if you are at home listening to music and watching movies consistently, and you don't have neighbors who will complain, I think it's time to consider investing in a high-quality system that can reproduce the music or movies you are experiencing in a much closer way to how the artist or sound engineers or you know composers had intended. If you're passionate about music, then you will absolutely deserve to listen to it in the highest quality possible. For example, Spotify. I know, most of society subscribes to it. Um, it's a music streaming service for the masses. But let's be honest, they have the most robust user interface and amazing discovery feature that allows their AI to provide you with the opportunity to, to listen to new music you may have you know, otherwise missed. That is actually the only reason I still subscribe to it. I was utterly disappointed that they just teased us. You know, they teased us with the transcendence from the inferior audio codec they use now to CD quality over a year ago and still haven't delivered. But that's neither here nor there. The point I was arriving to is uh, if you explore other options like Quobas, Amazon, or Apple's high resolution music offerings, you might be really surprised at the difference in quality between Spotify and basically all the rest. What you stream from a higher quality platform, the improvements are apparent if you are using engineered and designed components that are meant to provide you with that level of quality. If you only listen to music in your car though, with stock speakers via Bluetooth, this may not be the right arena for you. Nothing wrong with it, but this is, we're, in, we're talking about two different things. But when you buy an actual quality product from a reputable retailer or manufacturer, they have no problem showing you what high fidelity and high resolution audio are by providing an unforgettable sonic experience. Many shady companies often plaster their product boxes with stickers, acronyms, and other markings that would lead you to believe, that mean nothing to most, but that would lead you to believe that the product in question is superior because this fancy gold emblem says it is. This disinformation can sway someone into making a purchase based on just marketing copy rather than researching the product, reading reviews or, you know, watching reviews or taking the product for a test drive themselves and realizing it's just disposable audio. Many brands in this industry will not mind taking most of your money and giving you such an unbalanced price to value ratio. You may, t you might even tip over it's so unbalanced. So sort of works of both ways. The company's trying to sell you something really cheap and claiming it's amazing. And on the other side of the fence, the company's charging an arm and a leg, just this exorbitant amount of money for their products and manipulating your expectation bias into thinking it's quality when it's actually not. The best practice is to be aware. And if it sounds too good to be true in the audio industry, it usually is. Unless of course you come across a holy grail product. Those are rare though. 
However, if you enjoy sitting in your favorite chair with a fresh cocktail in hand, just sitting back, you know, closing your eyes and just losing yourself in the music, this next part will be essential for your listening experience. Hi-Fi audio is simple. It's the highest quality and level of music listening, period. But what does that mean? What's the highest level? Another question that usually comes up is, well, Mike, at what point can I consider a piece of gear hi-fi quality? Well, let's get the big elephant in the room out of the way. It doesn't necessarily coincide with cost. I have heard so many systems and components that I would classify subjectively as hi-fi quality that are affordable, some even, ab some even abnormally affordable. I don't wanna say cheap, because I feel cheap relates to something you wouldn't lament throwing in the trash. So if it breaks, so let's stay away from that word. It's a nasty word. So back in the eighties and nineties, high fidelity sounds started to improve with the advent of the compact disc. From there, it took a nosedive with the MP3 and resurrected itself with high resolution streaming. Still, the CD is relevant since its quality is considered the highest the human ear can hear. But that's for a future video. It's a whole nother bag of worms we'll open up later on. Uh, when I pit streaming versus CDs to see, you know, what we actually hear beyond CD quality. The first thing I would do if you are serious about this is figure out what budget you're working with. If you don't have much money to work with, I suggest you start with speakers first. Find a pair of speakers that can provide beautiful clarity, amazing detail, authoritative bass, and a soundstage that creates the illusion that you are in a sense, sitting in the center of a private performance from the artists themselves, playing just for you. Easier said than done, guys. This sometimes takes a while to test out dozens of speakers to find a pair that you're comfortable with. After you find those amazing speakers, though, I think it would be smart to start working on your room acoustics. I have actually started myself. I've, I'm... I'm doing it. <laughs> Most of the time, the room you are in is like public enemy number one and ruining the sound from your speakers. You'd be quite surprised by what adding a few room treatments, perhaps some nice curtains, can accomplish. Try it. There's so many resources out there that will give you a numerous amount of examples of how to treat your room. However, I will provide some cool stuff in the description below. Beyond speakers and room acoustics, that's when you will buy an amplifier, I suppose is next, capable of powering and matching well sonically with your speakers, but also powerful and versatile enough to power future upgrades down the road. Always a good idea. Now, if you are already listening to music through a CD or DVD player or music streamer at home, you're gonna need a nice DAC, a digital to analog converter. Uh, this machine will allow you to fine tune the sound signature, tonality, and overall quality that your digital sources feed through it. Think of it like, <sighs> think of it like the dial on an old radio. You know how you used to have to twist the knob ever so slightly to get the station you want to listen to as clear and clean as possible? That's what the right DAC will do for you. It will fine tune your system to provide you with an overall sound that you love and are comfortable listening to for hours on end. Once you have all these factors checked, you can consider yourself to have a, you know, a foundation of a system providing you with high fidelity sound. A good way to speed up the process is to search the used market for amazing finds. They are always there, just waiting to be discovered thrift stores, estate sales, all that stuff. Now, if you have heard the terms mid-fi and lo-fi, disregard this garbage jargon, uh, there's high fidelity and there's everything else. I refuse to create a socioeconomic class system for enjoying music, I think it's ridiculous. The philosophy of high fidelity is simple. If you have tried your best to do as much research in, as possible and have put together a system that you're, that you're personally proud of, regardless of price, a system that your ears enjoy more than anything else. Like if you invite friends over and the first thing you do is sit them down in that favorite chair of yours, put a drink in their hand and say to them, Fred, because your friend's name is Fred, Fred, you have to hear this. Then that, my friends, is hi-fi. It's more than just sonic quality. It's a lifestyle, a hobby. And for many, just like me, a passion. Thank you all for joining me today. I enjoyed our conversation and hope you can join me for more. If you had fun, I would love for you to strike the like button like a Chuck Norris, like with Chuck Norris accuracy. 
why do I write this? Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be notified when a new video emerges. Thanks again, friends, and I will be seeing you soon.